Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm using Apple Reminders to keep tabs on all of my tasks and to-dos. Now, I've used many applications in the past, everything from Apple Reminders a long time ago to Todoist. I've used ClickUp, a lot of different applications, including building out my own elaborate system in Notion that probably got a little overcomplicated, which led me back to Apple Reminders. Now, I decided to give Apple Reminders another look because I've been spending a lot of time in Apple Notes. Apple Notes has become just an invaluable tool for me and something that I use across all of my different Apple devices. And I made a separate video about how I use Apple Notes, so I highly recommend going and checking that one out after you get finished with this video. But you'll also, if you want a deeper dive into Apple productivity and getting the most out of all of your devices, take a look at the course that I have for Apple productivity. I'll link to that down in the description below. Let's jump into Apple Reminders. Now, I use this app on the desktop Desktop. I also use it on a variety of different iOS and iPad OS devices. I guess not a variety of iOS because I just have one iPhone, but a variety of different iPad OS devices. And then I also use it on the Apple Watch as well. So we're gonna go over the different devices, but I wanna show you how I have this set up. And things kind of continuously change a little bit. I'm still fleshing out exactly how to best use this, but I think I've landed on at least a couple of areas that make the most sense for me. So what you're looking at right now is my daily focus section, an area that allows me to see things that are coming up this week. And of course there is the inbox, there's today, which allows me to view all of the today items, anything that's scheduled, I can see all of the different reminders that I have set up, anything that's flagged, and then go and view all of my completed stuff. That's great. Sometimes that gets a little overwhelming. You have too many things on the schedule. And I've followed the full focus planner. Back in the day, I was using that planner for a little while. I didn't find the entire planner super useful, but there were things that I borrowed from it that I started using, such as having your top three or your big three tasks of the day, and then having a list of tasks that you can get to that are lower priority that you can work on if you've gotten those big three tasks out of the way. So I built somewhat of a system like that into what I call my daily focus area. And essentially these are three smart folders or smart lists that allow me to display tasks based on priority. And so when I'm viewing the entire folder of these lists, I get my top priority items, medium, low priority, and then a list of items that are no priority at all. And so I can see everything at a glance. Now, if I don't wanna be distracted and I just want my top priority items, I can click on that and just see my top priority. So every time that I come to reminders, I can see the top priority. And if I'm really distracted for the day, I could just get rid of the sidebar altogether and show just my top priority items. But typically I don't run into that problem. I try to just view what's here and not get distracted by all of the other pretty colors and icons over on the left hand side. But if I want to view all of my items for my daily focus, I can view them here. Now I also have a no priority section as well because these are items that I need to go and file somewhere. They need a priority and they are on today's date. So I'm gonna go through the rest of these folders really quick and then we're gonna talk about how to set up these smart lists that show you tasks based on certain criteria. Now I have an area section, which these are kind of my main categories as far as tasks. Tasks are either gonna go into family, financial, personal, or work. Now for family, it's shared tasks. So I have all of the people in my family and I can add tasks under their specific names. Now, because this is a shared list, it's also shared to my wife and my kids that have iOS devices. So my three oldest kids, my youngest kid does not have an iOS device yet. And so they can see their tasks, whether it be on their Apple Watch or on their iPad when they get to use their iPad. So adding tasks here will show up across all of their devices. I also need to be reminded of different financial things that are taking place in my life, like bills that are due, because it's nice to know when those things come up to make sure that I've moved money into the specific account. But what I do is in the morning, just go and check them off. It's mainly just a reminder for me to know that, hey, that's gonna hit my account. 
and I decided to add those, like making sure that anything that we put on a credit card gets paid off before it batches over to the next month in which we would get charged interest. And so those are the things that I'm trying to avoid. And I can't rely on the notifications that the app is supposed to send me for the specific financial institution because never fails. It doesn't send me a notification and then I forget and then I get charged interest when I should have just paid the thing off in the first place. Reminders definitely help prevent me from any of those mishaps. I then have a personal section where anything that's personal related shows up. And then I have a work section where anything work related shows up. I don't get too carried away with areas because most of the time this section is minimized. It's mainly just a way for me to organize all of those into lists for them to live. Everything down here are smart lists. Smart lists are lists that display tasks based on certain criteria. And so I set those up because I've just been playing with them and trying different things, even though most of these are gonna fit under either my personal or my work category. I thought I'll just try this out for a little while and I haven't spent a whole lot of time with these. Like if I go into client tasks, there's my client tasks. If I go into business, it's there. If I go into health, I have those there and I can see all of them. And so once I really start to add a lot of tasks, then maybe it's easier than looking in personal and seeing a whole bunch of tasks and not really being able to make too much sense of it. I can go into one of these smart lists and see all of my health related tasks or go in and view all of my projects or specific client stuff and also look at items that haven't been scheduled yet because there's no date attached to them as well. So these are useful and I'm still fleshing out how exactly I wanna use these. But let's talk about how to set one of these up in the first place. Let's start by building out the daily focus because this is where I spend most of my time. It's where I go in the morning for the first part of my day where I start working on my tasks. Now, the last thing that I do on my day is go in and try and set the tasks that I want to be my priority for the next day. They're not gonna show up in here because this area is only showing tasks with today's date, but then when the next day comes, this area is gonna automatically populate with all of the tasks based on their appropriate priority that I set the day before. So that's kind of my end of day procedure, which finishing off this video, it's the end of the day, it's like 7.30 p.m. I'm gonna go through pretty soon and make some adjustments so that I have my tasks set up appropriately for the next day. I do have some tasks that I haven't checked off yet for the day because I wanted to film this video and have a few tasks showing up in this section. So let's talk about how these are built. So this is a folder. And so you, what you'll want to do is create a folder or a group is what they're called here in reminders. And so with a list selected, if I go up to file and go down to group, it's going to create a new group and it will put that list in it. Now I already have a couple of those. So once I create one, you can see it's just really easy just to drag stuff in and out of these. All I have to do is just click and drag it and drop it into a group and it puts it in that specific group. So you can start out by creating these. Let's just keep this minimized. Let's create a new list. So I'll click on new list and let's say these are my top, I'll call it top tasks. So we'll type in top tasks and I'm gonna make this red because I want it to stick out the most and we want to change the list type to smart list. Now with smart list, we get some more options here and you can see that it is smart list that's selected and include reminders matching and I need to set that to priority and then priority to high. And then when I set priority to high on a task, it's gonna go ahead and put it in this folder. So now with this top task selected, it's showing me all of the top priorities. Now that isn't gonna work for us. We want only top priority that has the date set as today. So we're gonna to need to go back in and add another criteria, which is date and then we'll set date to today. And we'll want to make sure that matching is set to all because if matching is set to any, then it's not gonna matter whether it's today's date or top priority, it could be either or. We want it to match both, so it needs to be set to all. And I'll go ahead and hit okay, and you'll see that it emptied that out because there aren't any more tasks today that are flagged as high priority and set with today's date as the date for that reminder. So if you wanna set things up the way that I have them set up, you're also gonna to need to create a couple more smart lists just like this one and you'll follow the same process you'll create a new list you'll go in and maybe call it medium task or medium priority name it whatever you want 
change the color. I changed the color to uh, something other than red because I wanted red to be immediate. Like those are red tasks. They need to get done now. And then the colors got a little bit less. Like for medium priority, I had that set to yellow. And so you could choose colors that make the most sense and that draw the most attention to you. For our medium level task, so if we call this one medium, I would then change the priority to medium and then hit OK. And now this section is going to show medium tasks. But let's change the color and you can see now for medium tasks, we have that one task that's in there. And then I would do the same thing for low priority tasks. And then just so that it's easy for me to find the tasks that don't have a priority, I would also create one for no priority tasks as well. Now I have it set so that all of these show up, but if this is a little distracting to you, all you have to do is move the no priority tasks out of that folder and maybe put it down here towards the bottom and it's not gonna show up anymore. The reason that all three of these are showing up is because they are in this folder or group. I keep calling it a folder, but Reminders calls it a group. So anything that is in a group is going to show up in that way. For example, if I click on areas, you can see I have all of my areas showing up in here, which is quite a lot because that's all of the tasks. So any list that you put in a group will be able to be viewed all together in this view right here, which I think is pretty darn useful. Now, all of these smart lists down here, just to show you how they work, you can see that I have tags listed down here below. I've been using tags with a lot of my reminders. For example, if I wanted to add a tag to this ship Amazon order, I could click right here and add a tag to this. So for example, I might want to add work to this because this is a work related item. So if I add work to this, I've got the work tag in there now. Now this, you can see it has the tag, but if I go all the way down to my tags and click on the work tag, you can see any reminders that have the work tag on them. So this is just another way of organizing all of your stuff. And that's how these smart lists work. So for example, this bills smart list, if I go in and look at the information, you can see that it is a smart list and it is showing tags, any selected, and it's including the hashtag or the tag of bills. So all of these here have that tag assigned to them and it makes it very easy for me to see all of those items in one view. So these lists here are not lists that I would place a reminder in. They're being populated with reminders based on the tag that's associated. And so that's nice because if you have a reminder that you wanted to show up in a couple of different places, you wouldn't be able to do that if you just had regular lists. I couldn't put a reminder in both the family and the work or the personal and the work list at the same time because those are regular lists. It has to exist in one of those lists. But if I wanted to have it showing up in a couple of down here, maybe it's in it's part of a project and it's also part of family because maybe it's something for the household, it's a project that I'm working on and I wanted it to show up in those two areas so that if I wanted to go and see, hey, what are all of the family related tasks that I have or what are all of the projects that I have, by using tags and using smart lists, I can have things show up in multiple places, which I think is pretty powerful. And this is one of the ways that I use Apple Notes heavily. So if you're interested in organizing things in this way, definitely check out my video on how I use Apple Notes. So let's take a look at the iOS device here, the iPhone. We're going to swipe down and we'll just do a search for reminders and open that up. We'll go and tap on my daily focus view, which is very consistent with the daily focus view here on the computer. So when I have a task done, it's very easy for me just to tap on that and then it's gonna go away. And then it also goes away over on the Mac as well, which is awesome. So this is where I will come and look at the items that I have to work on today, just like I would if I was on my Mac or if I'm over on an iPad, I do the same thing. You can see I have all of the same views here that I would have on the Mac. And so if I wanna go and see all my tasks for this week, which is gonna include everything from bills to health and fitness stuff, it's basically everything that is scheduled and the date from what's coming up first all the way to the last thing within the upcoming week, I can view all of that. And so that's a nice view for me to see if I wanna see the things that are coming up within the next week. But that's pretty much how I use it on my iPhone. Now I also use my Apple Watch. I have a Apple Watch face here 
that I keep up and it shows me my upcoming reminder. Now I take some vitamins before bed so I have a reminder set for that and it's a very basic reminder. It just has the pill emoji for that. But if I went and created a new reminder and set the date, so let's just put a uh, test reminder and we will set the date for today and we will set the time, set it for 8 p.m. And we enter that. And now that is the soonest reminder that I have set up. Oh, it's already there on my Apple Watch. Test reminder. And so you can see the time and it shows the reminder right there on the Apple Watch face so that I have the next upcoming thing that I need to work on. So if we open up the iPad, we can see that I have my top priority item showing up in a widget. And so since I don't have any, it's not showing up right now. But if I swipe down and type in reminders and open up reminders, I get the same view here, a little bit more screen real estate than the iPhone. So it's nice to have the extra screen real estate and be able to see my list over here and all of my lists on the left-hand side. Of course, I can rotate and get a little bit more room there. But the iPad mini is something that I typically sit down with at the end of the day. I might read a Kindle book on it a little bit. I might respond to some comments on social media and on YouTube a bit. And then I'll go into my reminders and I will set my top priority reminders for the next day so that they'll show up in my daily focus section. And then when I'm spending a bit more time somewhere else, maybe I'm in a coffee shop or whatnot and I have the iPad Pro with me, I'll open that up. I'll open up the reminders app in the same way and view all of the stuff there. Daily focus, obviously I have a lot more screen real estate here. And so this is a great option as well but I don't often spend as much time in the Reminders app here because when I'm using my iPad Pro, I tend to be a bit more focused. I'm working either on some notes or maybe an outline for a video or responding to some emails or something like that. And so I tend to use the Reminders app most of the time on my phone and also on my computer. So that's how I'm using the Reminders app right now. I hope that there were a few features or some things that kind of make sense to you and things that you might set up so that you can get more out of the Reminders app for yourself. Apple's been adding a lot of really neat features to things over the last few iterations of Mac OS, making these tools much more useful and keeping me from switching back and forth to different apps because there are a lot of great apps out there. But what I found is that I want simple and I want stuff that works. And right now, Apple Notes and Apple Reminders are doing it for me. So let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out my upcoming course on Apple productivity. That's linked in the description. Give this channel a subscribe. I would appreciate it so much if you would click that subscribe button. And if this video was super useful, also give it a thumbs up. Thanks again, and we'll see you back in another one soon. Take care.